Hello, this is Chuck Carnivale, and with this video, I'm going to take a look at how to value MLPs, and I'm also going to point out some of the um, challenges that arise with attempting to value the MLP. As I mentioned in the written portion of this article, MLPs have very complex capital structures, and when you're trying to value an MLP, utilizing traditional metrics such as earnings, and probably especially gap earnings, makes it very, very difficult to come up with some sense of whether the MLP is currently trading at attractive valuation or not. The problem is MLPs invest heavily in hard assets and consequently depreciation accounting can really make their earnings um, look negative when, when their cash flows are actually strong and they can create a, a lot of additional problems. But there's another aspect of attempting to look at earnings which has to do with dilution which I'll cover in a few moments. But it's very, very tricky attempting to value MLPs. Now I presented five MLPs in this article, and I'm going to go through them very quickly, starting with Buckeye Partners. I'm going to use gap earnings, and I want you to notice the, the level of inconsistency you see when you look at these MLPs. Here's Enterprise Products Partners. You can see that earnings are relatively inconsistent. This is Energy Transfer Partners. This is one of the MLPs that's going through the merger. It really gives you a clear picture of how erratic the earnings of the company are. The earnings, of course, are reflected by this orange line on the graph. For those of you who are not familiar with Fast Graph, Plains All-American Pipeline, another MLP that has some rather inconsistent earnings, gap earnings record historically, and Sunoco Logistic Partners, the second part of the MLP that's going to be merged. So earnings, gap earnings, or even operating earnings don't really give you a clear picture of valuing an MLP. So operating earnings probably make the most sense because really MLPs are all about distributable cash flow. So when you look at operating earnings, you can get some decent perspectives of valuation because again it's all about the cash flows and the amount of cash flows available to pay or continue to distribute their distributable income. MLPs don't pay dividends per se, they actually make distributions per unit. So as I go through these I hope it was easy for you to see that it's very very difficult to come up with a metric that is effective for valuing to try to determine whether the MLP is attractively valued or not. Perhaps the best metric that's available to premium subscribers to fast graphs would be the EBITDA per share metric because EBITDA of course is earnings before income taxes depreciation and amortization so what you have here is more of a straight look at the company's cash flow or earnings now when you look at Plains All American here you see a very interesting correlation between the company's EBITDA and their stock price stock price being the black line in the graph similar when you look at Sunoco logistic partners and I'll go through one or two more here very quickly just to illustrate that EBITDA earnings will give you probably the clearest picture of whether or not the, the specific MLP is actually attractively valued. However, there's another aspect of MLPs that I found interesting when I was attempting to research them and value them, and I don't necessarily consider this sophisticated financial advice or analysis, excuse me, but one thing I'll say about MLPs, they do seem to have a very consistent dividend record. So I'm going to take all metrics off of these graphs and only look at the company's dis distribution per unit in conjunction with their stock price. And what you'll see as I go through these very quickly is a very interesting correlation where the stock price tends to react to the distribution level that the MLP produces. So in the case of enterprise product partners here, if the stock price is touching that distribution line, I'm, uh, I'm suggesting it may be fairly valued. When it's below the distribution line, it would be undervalued. And as we saw coming into 2014, when the price gets significantly above that distribution, line, then the MLP becomes very overvalued. I think this is interesting because we all know what's been going on in energy lately. And as a result of that, Enterprise Partner Products Partner specifically saw the price fall dramatically, even though they continued to make and grow their distribution levels, because technically the MLPs are not directly sensitive to oil and gas pricing. Energy Transfer Partners is another example where you see a very decent relationship. There's some trickier aspects of this because this company um, has some issues where they might have been forced to cut their distributions. If you look at this company with from the standpoint of operating cash flows, for example, um, you can see that 
they did have some operating cash flow stress. Plains All American is another example of an MLP that actually cut their dividend in 2015, and we saw a very strong reaction to their stock price. Otherwise, the correlation is very high. So this is kind of a simple way of of looking at valuation of MLPs. Just look at the price in relation to the company's distribution record using either operating cash flow or adjusted operating earnings. Now, with that said, I would like to turn to the financial underlying numbers utilizing fund graphs in the Fast Graphs research tool here and look at something that I think often goes overlooked by investors when they're thinking about investing in MLPs. MLPs are constantly raising capital. They're constantly increasing their unit count in order to raise capital in order to fund their future growth. So as I go through these very quickly, I want you to see that in the case of Buckeye Partners, in 1996, the company had 24 million units. And by 2016, they had increased that to over 131 million units. A lot of dilution here. So it's another reason why it's very difficult to look at standard metrics like earnings when you're evaluating these MLPs. This level of dilution is very consistent when I've looked at most MLPs that I've ever looked at. Here's Enterprise Product Partners. In 1996, they had 220 million units. By December of 2016, they had 2.1 billion units. Dilution is a hallmark of MLPs. In order to grow their businesses and continue to raise their distributions, they are constantly raising capital, diluting existing unit holders. I'm not going to go through all five of these. I'll end with Plains All-American here, but it's consistent with all five in this list. Their common shares outstanding or common units outstanding was 34 million in 1996, 660 million units by December of 2016. This dilution is something that I believe investors in MLPs need to be aware of, the fact that they are continuously being diluted by man. Perhaps the good news that counteracts the dilution of investing in an MLP are revenues. These are the revenues of Plain, Plains All-American, and you can see their revenues have increased from $34 million in 1996 to $660 million by 2006. Next, we have some Sunoco Logistic Partners. Once again, we see revenues increasing from $700 million in 1998 to $10.5 billion by December of 2015. So these companies do dilute their shares and they do continuously go to the marketplace and increase their unit count in order to raise capital, in order to continue to build additional infrastructure and so on. But the good news is the revenues that come along with that are what's allowed these entities to continue paying and increasing their distributions over over time. The bottom line for and the purpose of this article and presentation is to illustrate that MLPs are very complex entities. They have complex financial statements. They have very complex relationships with general and limited partners. There are a lot of tax considerations also involved with investing in MLPs. But as you can see by looking at the performance reports I included in the written portion of this article, they do offer very attractive yields and they do generate a significant amount of income, a lot of it which is tax deferred during the distribution phase. Here you can see in the case of Sunoco, which is soon going to merge, generated on a $10,000 investment since 2002, generated over $36,000 in distributable income versus $3,356 of dividend income from the S&P also generated a significant level of capital appreciation. So some of you might feel like MLPs are worth the risk, and I wouldn't necessarily argue with that, but I do believe it's imperative that you keep your eyes wide open. These are relatively low credit rating companies. They have a lot of risk associated with investing in them, but in the long run, they can also be excellent investments as long as you know what you're getting yourself into. This has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for listening.